What's poppin' is your boy Mike Powers. Without any further ado, let's hit the lights. For my real hip hop heads only. Very rarely do we have the opportunity to host an artist that brings so many different gifts to bear all at once, but this is indeed one such occasion. The man on the left side of your screen is a Buffalo native who seems to reject the idea of being just one thing. To the contrary, his content is projected upon all manner of consumables, which we will absolutely explore during the conversation you have been so lucky to have chosen. Deuce Ellis has reconfigured the sport in so many different ways that I find it completely implausible that even he would know how to put it back together. The situation with this dude is mad serious. Yes, bars is on deck. But check this, he dances with the universe. If this sport itself was basketball, then he, he is the Eurostep, an amalgamation of an authentic stream of conscious street rhymes that give context to a man and not a cartoon, while forging unashamedly into the unknown. And you don't know that he's demonstrating just how limitless we are as people in the process. My people, it gives me great pleasure to welcome for the first time on the Mike Power Show, Brooklyn transplant, multi-instrumentalist, MC, producer, designer, entrepreneur, and author, Deuce Ellis is in the building. Woo! What's good, what's good, well, Mike, Mike Powers, man, thank you for, for having me here. It's a beautiful thing, it's a beautiful thing. You looking good, champion. Oh, well, thank you, thank you. Good. I have not heard Still no. Clear. Take I good have... care of yourself. Yeah, I, I haven't heard those words in about 15 years. So yeah, <laughs> brownie points, we in here. Um, thank you so much for uh, agreeing to sit down. I think this is an important moment and I think the people who I said before were lucky enough to tune in is in for a treat. I really wanna dive right into it. You were born in Buffalo, right? Yes, yes. Uh, so you're in you Brooklyn now. Uh, how, how long were you in Buffalo before moving? Oh, my mom's remarried and moved when I was like three. Which she moved. She met, you know, like another dude moved when I was three. Um, and then I spent every summer, every Christmas in Buck. So that, like that, you know, because she's, she's still close. So, but I've been back and forth between the two since three years old. Got you. And with what Griselda has been doing and how Upstate has made their mark as well, um, you have any thoughts on what's going on up there? Is there something in the water in Buffalo? Um, it is. You know what's you know what's real, real dope, man? And I we seen this kind of you remember back when like Wiz was blowing up and the Steelers won like the Super Bowl around that same time? Like I yellow. felt a similar energy where like the Bills is kicking ass. We got, you know, records all over the charts. And yeah, this this there's just a beautiful resurgence going on. I think um I mean all that talent, I know I know of all those dudes, you know what I'm saying? When I was younger, I used to put my posters up next to Benny's posters at, like, King City and shit, or put them over Benny's posters. Um, so, you know what I mean? Like, what's happening right now is amazing. The city's getting hope. And I think this is the first wave. Like, now that motherfuckers are seeing... My bad. Now that people are seeing that... Um, are you good? It's possible. You know what I'm saying? Um... And they're seeing, you know, people that, that look like them from where they're from, having the accolades, having the success, moving in a certain manner. And then there's more eyes on the city right now. You know what I'm saying? Like, like all my homies that hit me now, like, they be somewhere like Florida or Atlanta, and they say they're from Buffalo, and where that used to be, like, oh, where is that? Now it's like, ooh, Griselda, I love Buffalo. So that's that's beautiful, man. That's alchemy. That's something changing. Real talk. Um. Talk to me about this album, and I want to pronounce it correctly. Um, yeah. Well, you pronounce it Midnight. Midnight Oribus. Midnight Oribus. Talk to me about the album. First, let's start with the title. Yeah, yeah. So, all right, I got an Oribus tattoo right here. It's the, uh, the Infinity Snake where the snake is eating its tail. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I got that during this, this time period. It represents kind of life, death, recreation, the fact that you create yourself 
You know what I'm saying? And and it's always that process. Like as soon as you feel like you've reached the mountaintop, you've achieved something, it's almost time to kill off that version of yourself. Absolutely. So that you can make something fresh. Yeah. So um the title came, you know, I I was obsessed with Arbors and I wanted to figure out something with that. And I was sitting with the dude, uh Kevin Delgado, who I did the comic book with. And, you know, I wanted it to be a comic book title. Um and yeah. something that was two words and and dope. And we was just conversing back and forth and Midnight Arbus came up and was like, that's it, that's it. And it fit the sound, it fit the, the grittiness of the, the graphic novel, it fit the, the sonics that I had in my head. It had a spiritual undertone. And then I, you, you know how you start a project, it take life of itself. So once we had that title, it started just going and building and I felt it. And, and I thought it'd be cool to put like a funny sounding title out there. You know what I mean? Like yeah. teach people a word. So I'm on your IG. Yeah. Um, and it's, a, it's actually a good follow, by the way. Um, uh, this is a quote um, I believe I found on your IG. Your favorite rapper doesn't design their own sneakers and can't <laughs> bust a guitar solo after they verse, nor did they take the time to create a comic book for you full of black superheroes. So let's unpack all that luggage piece by piece. Okay, you play guitar, <laughs> right? Yeah. Okay, and how proficient are you as a player? Um, I've been playing for like two years now. Matter of fact, it's November, so it was two years ago that I picked up guitar and started learning. And I say that like I'm a very, very advanced intermediate. You know what I'm saying? But like I work. Listen, I'm obsessed. Like you see, like I got this. This one is old black man. This guitar right here. I got her here next to me. And, you know, I'm putting in at least an hour every day, but, you know, we got days where we go on way beyond that. And then I started this new personal challenge every day for 30 minutes. I got to take my guitar, my bass, drum machine, make a beat. I write a 16 just to stay sharp. And so that when, you know what I mean, time is called on, I got to bust a solo. I got to play on someone else's record. Um, that's nothing. And then, you know, the sneakers are here. So yeah, we're going to get to the sneakers, though. But let me ask you this. Guitar yeah. player. Yeah. You have any familiarity with Gary Clark Jr.? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Okay. Gary Clark's the man. So you been, have you been um, watching him, studying him? Do you, can you hit them little, them solos? Gary Clark Jr. Yeah. and the solos, man. So, all right. And, and here, here's what's dope. When I picked up guitar, right, I just had this vision on my head of, like, me being as black as fuck and busting a solo and a pair of Jordans, right? And I love Gary Clark Jr., but that was part, like, seeing him also was like, yo, this lane that I see is open because no one's doing it. There's no yeah. one who come with the bars and then a switch and hit that. And, like, first of all, this is our shit. Chuck Berry made the guitar sex. Guitar was a fucking, you know what I'm saying, background instrument, rhythm instrument. It's your show. Cool. Talk. And, uh, Preach. Sister, wait, before Chuck Berry, Sister Rosetta thought, you know what I'm saying? Like, they, they took guitar and they made it sexy. And it was our shit. And then we all know, you know, the guy, Jimmy, right? And so why wouldn't this be embraced? And why wouldn't I want young black boys to see a guitar, pick it up, or, or any instrument? And then, so I watched this Prince interview the other day, right? And they, they asked some Prince, because they're like, yo, you know, next to Jimmy, a lot of people say you're one of the greatest guitarists ever. And Prince was saying the same thing. And it, it hit me that, like, I knew that that spirit was the same, which is the discipline that it takes to get really, really great at the instrument and the, the joy that comes from it. Like, I would want that for everybody. You know what I mean? And especially like, you know, coming up in the hood. And now, now they're cheap. You can get a guitar for 200 bucks. You know what I mean? Young black boy, young black girl. Sit, like her got the first black woman to have a signature Fender guitar. Like things like that are epic. So just seeing that lane inspired me and keeps me inspired. And then like, you know, like, to have a track like Can't Be Killed off the album where you got G4 Jag spitting bars, you got Hus Kingpin spitting bars, I'm going off. And then to end the song with like a solo, you know what I'm saying? Like, who else is doing that other than like Kanye West and Rick Ross on Devil in a New Dress, right? And then even, that means they got to get Mike Dean. Mike Dean's as hip hop as they come, but you know what I'm saying? Like, I just wanted my black skin to be able to do those things. Like, and when I see John Mayer pop up, dog, and, and it's a Jay-Z concert or whatever other rapper, and they want a cool guitar solo, and it's John Mayer. I was like, nah, John, move over. I'm coming. 
comic word up, shop. word up. That's yeah. where we at with it. That's where we at with it. And so, for people who we we you touched on the name there, yeah. That I want to just go back and give some context to the people. If y'all don't know who Sister Rosetta Tharp is, is a great documentary on PBS. If you go on PBS online, you might be able to find that documentary about Sister Rosetta Tharp. Because let me tell you, Elvis Presley said that Sister Rosetta Tharp taught him how to do this thing. Like, that's where he got all his his style from. So um, I'm, I'm glad that you know your history, though. I saw the video for Love Ain't Free. Yeah. I, I really dig that cut. Um, you spit bars while playing the guitar at the same time. Love ain't free. Love ain't free. Might be dirty, might be cheap. Love ain't free. Check it. Hope for street kids through the notes and sequence. Flying through the city in a big body Lincoln. I feel in the gaps that the teachers don't teach them. They don't believe the lies politicians be preaching. Hoard the fake news from the media beasting. We drain out the swamp and remove all the leeches. I show up with the dogs, let them all off the leashes. We move through the world like we know a secret. Love is the answer. Love is the freedom. But you got to fight for it, baby. Love ain't free. Say it. Yeah, it sort of yeah. feels like blues too. Um, that was a blues record. Explain to me what the hell is going on, Deuce Ellis. You have to explain. I, I, it's it's great, it's great. But that's the way I put the question down on the paper. I, I was watching the video, writing the question mm -hmm. out, and I'm thinking, how do I make this question sound halfway intelligent? I cannot. You have to explain to me what the hell is going on. Because, and I'm I'm playing the video on the screen right now. Um, What's going on, bro? So, video starts out. Uh, I think I'm on the, the light pad block from Roly. Shout out Roly. Uh, do a bass line, hit the MPC, lay some drums, and then once the, the groove is there, and that's 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 a uh, 12 bar blues standard. Like, you know what I mean? That that chord progression is just a classic 12 bar blues. And that's what I, I just wanted to make a blues track that had like faster drums, harder hitting drums, and some bars. It's so good. Like you like you. It, it seems like it's a. It feels like a little bit of singing going on. Like but a, a mixture of singing and rapping right there in the beginning, first verse. It's melodic. Second verse, that's, you go that's bars. You go that's bars. That's where this came from, though. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? Like, and so, so that record and, and a lot of what I did, especially when I picked up the guitar, I started like learning music theory and just just want to be. You know what I mean? Like, I wanted to be a musician. And when I seen like musicians I was around and they was talking that talk and they could play and pick up on something and like I could sing something, they could play it. I was like, I want that. Why not? And then I seen Quincy Jones documentary that, that joined on Netflix and he was like, man, it don't matter if you rap or sing, you should still play something, right? So, you know, just the history of music, the old Negro spirituals, that's rap. Hmm. When they was singing in the field, uh, that's rap. You know what I'm saying? Like, the first blues cats, they would break down and they'd rap on the track and they was just giving a pain. And so, what's the difference between that and what Future do? And you design your own sneakers, is this correct? So let's, so people, people, we getting deep right now. All right, we got, we got us a spitter. I told you bars is on deck. The man plays guitar. He designs his own sneakers. Let's dig into the, do, these sneakers on either side of you, you design these. Yeah, these are these are these are my designs. These are my first two models out, um, totally by accident. I never ever. I mean, in my head, right? I always thought the route was I got to be a super famous rapper, and then like Nike will call me or something, or I could be able to go to them and be like, "Yo, let's go to Nike and get a shoe," mm. right? Um, and then it occurred to me that like I could start now. I could build credibility. I could enter the, the game with something. And the opportunity presented itself. I made a design. It's so decent. It's like, okay. And then, and that's, so a cup, in the universe, right? You were talking about this earlier. Sometimes it just orders your steps. So within a one week span of like, I sold more shoes than I would have expected to sell. A really, really great friend of mine gives me a book. Like we do a book trade all the time. But the book that he traded me was Phil Knight's Shoe Dog. You know, mm. Phil Knight is the co-founder of Nike. 
And the book is all about how he starts Nike from the ground up, selling sneakers out of his trunk, like how Master P sold CDs. Let me stop so, you right there. You made 6000 overnight one time. Go ahead, continue. On the sneakers, you made 6000 overnight. I'm, I'm on people's social. In sales. In sales. In, in, in sales. sales. In sales. sales. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I, you know, sometimes I posted that because um, someone else that I follow who sells hair oils, she had done like 6000 in sales overnight and posted it. And that got me hungry. And, you know, usually you don't want to, like, put numbers and shit, but the fact that I got such inspiration from her posting that, and then, like, that pushed me to, like, do some numbers. When I hit that goal, I was like, boom, let me let me share that and see who else I could get hungry. Yeah. And, and get, you know what I mean? Like, little fire under the ass. But, Wait, well, do, yeah. do me a favor. Do me a favor. That shoe right there in front of the guitar, can you put that up to the camera real quick? I think we want to take a real good look at this joint. Called classic tools on my feet to make a high beat stop. Nice. Now listen. Stores just hit me up, say they need a restock. So we break it down. You got the gold bottom for the sole. You got Santa Claus suede. You know what I'm saying? This is all suede, the white suede, and then you got the Santa Claus leather. It's a high top basketball shoe, but it's a luxury high top basketball shoe. It's comfortable as fuck. It's like walking on clouds, and you look great. And then you know what I love about it. You know, for, for people who love sneakers, love sneaker culture, you get to show up in these. Don't nobody else have these. Everybody else got all the same drops that you get off of StockX and go. You know what I'm saying? Like, they all fighting for the same thing. So this was just a chance to, like, really, really special, super premium materials, um, and, and just a beautiful shoe, right? But I got to get to the question that everybody, I know my people, and my people know me. And they always say, yeah, you oh, you asked the question I wanted to ask. I'm about to do that again right now. Hey, this shoe, yeah. these shoes, yeah. this is not Nike. This is not Adidas. This is your shoe. Yes. That shoe right is yours. So this whole thing from Ruta to the Tudor was constructed, yeah. designed, implemented by you. Yeah. I don't even think a lot of us knew that this type of thing was possible. So take me behind the curtain. How you go about right. starting off to design your own shoe? It seems like a Herculean task. All right. So, no, no, no. I'm going to tell you right now because the internet is a wonderful, wonderful thing. And for anyone who's listening, I'm not going to be that person who, like, keeps all the game to themselves. Good, because I'm going to get into you, your DMs. Uh, if, if you really, really are serious about this, you can start looking up right now manufacturers. Um, you can find you some shops. You know what I'm saying? Some of them already have like silhouettes. You can request to design your own silhouette. If you got designs already, then submit your designs. One, like I said, Phil Knight, Sh Shoe Dog. That book is incredible. And he's selling sneakers out the trunk, like how Master P sold records out the trunk, right? So that's that's the parallel for me in my mind for from a hustle standpoint and how it, it rides with both music and, and sneakers, right? Cause it's all it's all the same thing when when you put hustle to it and you create a culture. Um, but the second part is, in that same week, I ended up seeing like an ad that there was a sneaker school program through FIT, Fashion Institute of Technology in New York, and I sent them my designs and the fact that I had already had like one shoe done, and they offered a scholarship. But the, the program is not really that expensive, anyways. But anyone who wants to sign up, you can sign up now. You can submit. And you know what I mean? Like, you get access to a lot of education about the history of shoes, um, manufacturing, product, every aspect of the sneaker game and all the different ways to make money off of it, whether you want to just cop and resell, you know what I'm saying? Whether you want it to just have a flagship store, like all of those, the, the coursework covers that. And then it really influenced how I approached this game. So I learned a lot more about, you know, building the brand of the sneakers, marketing them and all of that. Um, but if, if you're so inclined, and I know that there's a hustler or two that's gonna hear this, do your Googles. Look up, I wanna make my own sneaker. And there's various different ways, you know what I mean? And like, I'll tell you this too, right? Depending on how much risk that you wanna take on is, is the type of agreements and setups that you can get. So like, if you wanna try and start a factory from scratch, which is what Sway said to Kanye, and Kanye wild out, and was like, you don't have the answer, Sway. You don't have the answer, Sway. You don't have the answer. And Sway no. said we can turn these mics. Sway said we can turn these mics. So. 
Yo, listen, if you look at that interview, then you think he's crazy. But when you understand why he had a desire to partner with like an Adidas or a Nike and then it works and $5 billion later, then it's like, ah, I see now. But what he was saying is, you know, this, to start a factory and buy the materials yourself is, is astronomical. And then you have the fact that like a company like Nike, they got all the plugs. So if you want the good, good leather, Nike's buying it by the pound. You know what I'm saying? When you go to the, the good, good leather people, they're not even really trying to hear you when you're like, yeah, I need a couple ounces of leather. I'm making a few shoes. They're like, nah. Right. You, know, you know what I mean? Like our right. agreement with Nike won't even let us do that. Let me ask you this. Um, how, how much is that a pair of those going to set me back? These right here are 215 Okay. Uh, and they're delivered to your door within two weeks. These are handcrafted in Italy. And then these are 235 um, And you're doing good margins on that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, that's what's, like there's a there's a base number off of that that I get. Um, and my agreement, without, you know, going too much into it, manufacturer handles the making. I, I do the designs. I connect with customers. And we split the money accordingly, right? Because you still, you know, in that price, you got to think of the price of the shoe, the material, paying somebody to make it, the packaging. And then that also, like, the customer pays no shipping. And these all get shipped directly to the customer. You get it within, like, two weeks, straight to your door, fitted to your foot. And you know what I mean? Like, it's it's a gorgeous packaging. Um and most people just enjoy the experience too, you know what I'm saying? Like of getting something that very few people have. And that's what I'm gonna do with these is keep these still to limited numbers. And then, you know, I got some new designs in the pipeline. But um, long term, man, I got dope plans in terms of like moving through the sneaker industry. I will want to work with some of the bigger companies, um, do some designs with them, and then, you know, still still maintain autonomy. Um, Cats like Don C, huge inspiration. Cats like Virgil, huge inspiration. Um, again, you know, Ye kicked the door open, kicking and screaming. So now that there is more and more lanes, I think it's important that we continue to establish, you know, boutique brands and, and independent black owned, uh, you know, brands. And you and mentioned Virgil there. And um, yeah. so those, yeah. those shoes is, a, is about, you know, with the, well, I think they would say four and a half Virgil. Some people know what I'm talking about. Talk about your relationship with my brother, uh, G4 Jag. Yo. Y'all got, sing, got a single that just came out. Yeah, yeah. That, that joint's amazing. Shout out to Jag. I've known Jag 10 years now. Uh, the homie L Biz introduced us. So L Biz, here's a shout out, bro. I love you tremendously. That's my brother. I love him. He loves me. Uh, and it was Biz who was like, yo, y'all should connect. And, you know, we just stayed in, in touch over the years, stayed in tune. And then, you know, kind of just seeing what each other was doing. Um, his work ethic is incredible. Amazing family man. And when I was when I was doing this album, I knew I wanted him on you know. Um, and I know not everybody even, I think people are getting it now, right? And I think, I think Jaggy's really, really put his foot on the gas pedal yeah, um, and, and, and on people's necks and he's not letting up. But I don't know if people got it at first when, when they were hearing this music and the, the drive, the passion, the pain, the hunger, but I did. And so I wanted to make, you know, like from, from a musician standpoint, just a really, really beautiful piece of music, um, you know, had that bass line, that hit, throw the flutes over it uh, and something, you know, where, where again, can have that big, guitar solo at the end, epic moment. And when I sent it to Jag, man, listen, that motherfucker is such a beast. I think I sent him the beat and like maybe a couple days passed and I called him like, yo, I'm headed to the studio. You got that verse. And like, by the time I hung up the phone, the verse was in my email. You know what I mean? Like, like he was working, working. And yeah. the verse he sent is powerful. Man, so. He got bars, bars. That man bars got bars. On bars, on bars. Yeah, that's shout out on that joint too. Oh, Shout yeah. out Husky Kingpin. Um, Husky Kingpin. Husky Kingpin, if you're listening, I, I'm trying to get you on the schedule. I have not reached out yet, but I've been thinking about reaching out to you for like five, six months. Husky Kingpin is nasty. Um, listen, 
This is the other thing about Midnight Arbors, this album, bro. I just have my favorite rappers on there. Like, and that oh. was what was dope for me. It's like I was listening to all these cats, cats like Ty Ferris. Shout out to Ty, his album's out. Um, Rome is on there. Rome's on there. And like, you know, Rome and I go back years. Papa um, who? Jeez. Pop, that's, that's, that's. Talk that's to me about Papa Wu. I know this is a story. It's a story. So talk, talk to us about how you came in contact with Papa Wu. Legendary. Um, I had a period of time. I mean, I'm still like this, but there was definitely a period of time two years ago where like, I ain't do nothing but like it. I was in the gym and I was in the studio. I was in the gym and I was in the studio. And this particular night, like the homies, and you know, I, there's a compound here. Like some homies live on each floor, the studio on the first floor. And we all fucking work. But the homies were, um, there's like, yo, we had now, you want to come on? I'm like, nah, I'm in the lab working. So while they out, I get a phone call later, like, yo, you still in the studio? Yes. We got Papa Wu with us, and he wants to come make some music. Uh, first thing Pop said to me, gets to the basement, and, you know, like I said, I'm, I'm ready. Like, I'm, I'm in the zone. Shake hands. He's like, yo, you're a warrior. I can feel, I feel your spirit. Man, we made like four joints that night. And he just came through like probably every day, every other day for like the next three, four months, just making music every day. Or, Remind or me of the name of this cut, him that he's on. Well, it was Riz's keyboard. Riz's keyboard, yes, yes. And then I was and, scared uh, to talk, I was scared to talk about six 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 because you just dropped this thing called six six six. We'll get into that. I said, Lord Jesus, help me. What <laughs> no, nah, we'll get into that. We'll get into that because that's why I dropped it. But um, Riz's keyboard, like I said, okay. Pop and I are developing this 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 bond. Um, so much wisdom, so much game, and I'm soaking it up, and I'm hungry, and I'm you know what I mean. Like he he tell me something that he hear in his head musically, and then I do it. So uh, one day he hits me. He's like, "Yo, I got this keyboard that I gave Riz that he gave back to me, and I want to give it to you because." There's a whole bunch of original sounds that he put on there. And everyone that I ever tried to give it to, they could never figure out how to get to the sounds or, like, get it working. And, like, it's it's an old core Triton. And I've seen, you know, when I look up, like, on YouTube, Rizza in the studio, like, I've seen that Triton. Goosebumps. Um, and so Pop's like, yeah, I'll, I'll bring it. And sure enough, like, he came through. Um I think I went there in a cab, carried it down, got in a cab, fucked that shit up, and made something that that night. You know what I mean? I mean, um, all due respect to Deuce Ellis, people that's watching this. All due respect to Deuce Ellis. Um, I think you, you, the more y'all go dig, y'all gonna find him to be a phenomenal artist. But uh, uh, it's a moment for me to be talking to a man who, who put his hands on Riz's keyboard. Yeah, yeah. And then, you know, like, I found the sounds. It's it's a whole it's a whole section of the keyboard that's just got and you you can tell when he's experimenting and not everything was like a complete idea and then there's some shit that's just fire um, and then I figured out how to take all the sounds off the keyboard and put them onto my MP but um for that track you know I, I it had always been on my mind to just take one of those dope like key sounds and play some shit out and. And the Triton used to be the deal back in the back in the day. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And the other reason why I love the Triton is because you know, like that's what the Neptunes used to do all of their shit. Like mm. it's also got those. Like the Triton was just that that thing mm -hmm. for production for a certain point in time. And like you know, to have it as like a relic, a museum piece, and then still be able to to get some fire off of it, I love it. Did you ever and mess I with the, always, Did you ever mess with the Phantom? Nah. Okay. I messed with the Phantom before too. I never mastered it, but yeah. Um, let me. I so, you was gonna say? I know you made music too. So. Yeah. Um, back in the day, I I did some things. I had a crew. I ran, I take I took a run for a few years, and um, my whole thing. I think I've described this on my show before. Is that when I realized that I was nowhere near as good as my idols i just decided i should not be doing this which i i wish more people would take that tack before putting their stuff into my dms listen to your idols first uh do you, <laughs> do you come anywhere near them at all <laughs> and if you don't just stop doing my my people i like nas and cool g rap and these guys i was never as good as them guys i quit i let them dudes do it and now i'm talking to the stars right now 
Um, but you know what though? Yeah, I, I'll say this for um for MC, and th and this is when you when you ask about all the the different shit, right? Yeah. Three years ago, Aloe Black is like a mentor of mine, right? Um, Aloe Black. Tour, yeah, I got to tour with him when when I was young, young, when like I needed dollar first drop, and so a few years ago, you know. <clears throat> You read books about how to get wealthy. They always say, take someone that's in your craft, that's ahead of you, out to lunch. So I took him out to lunch. And one of the things that he said to me that always stuck with me was like, yo, if, if you got a mind that can write rhymes, you could do anything. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got creative ability to do whatever. So it just, it was always just like, all right, why, why limit? You know what I'm saying? Like, what else can my brain do? I could write rhymes all day. And once that gets easy enough, then like you still got mental capacity to do more. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So I wrote a book to shut him up. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but but so the the um you created a comic book. So yeah, yeah. It, we go on levels yeah. again. So now we got we got a guy that's a producer, we got a guy that's a spitter, we got a guy that's designed his own sneakers. Um we got a guy who has his own comic book. Now you you write the copy, right? And you got a illustrator. Yeah, yeah. Kevin Delgado is nasty, man. Shout out Kevin's company, Solstice Art. But see, let me tell you how it come, all comes. Oh, wait a minute, up, though. Right before you get to that, I'm, I don't mean yeah. to cut you off. Your characters wear your sneakers in the comic book. Is that correct? Yes, yes. And that's what I was. Gonna, so here's here's how it all all comes together. And this is why I say like it seems like a lot. But it also, and, and you know, for anyone, and I'm inspired by by all the other greats. You know what I'm saying? Like this symbol, I used to make comic books when I was a kid with my uncle, and you know, Superman had the S, Batman had his joint, and so this was like what I made for my my superheroes. Fast forward when like I'm speaking to the homies, like, yo, need a logo. And something that's not necessarily your name, but that can be a symbol bigger than you, like, you know, how Kiss or, or um, ACDC or the Grateful Dead or the Rolling Stones, they all have a dope symbol mm -hmm. and they sell merch for forever, tour for forever. And I, I got it. And this just came from my childhood, right? Yeah. And yeah. so all of these things are still centered around, like, that same energy, that same idea. So making a comic book was just, was just natural. I've been doing that. And it's, it's again... Word, lyrics, words, right? And then, you know, you design. So, of course, the character would wear the sneakers and, and you know, world build or whatever. Um, and, and you know, like the ship, this is the logo for the ship. So it's it's just building this world. And it's, it's it all comes from the same source. It's all, like, expression. So all of my superheroes, you know what I'm saying, from, like, Rome, who's an incredible spitter, mm. Ty, who's a fucking beast, SD Nat fucking showed his ass. People ain't heard that record yet. Oh my gosh, I can't wait till Friday. Um, Camouflage Monk is a superhero to me. You know what I'm saying? Big That's time. My Big time. And, so, um, and you know, like, we did the Camo Wellness joint together, and that shit was amazing. Is that the instrumental joint? Huh? Did you yeah, an inst yeah. inst instrumental album? Yeah, this joint. Yo. This joint. It's only a couple of these left too. Like I'm gonna oh. look you up. Don't worry. get your address. Oh, don't tell me that because everybody said they're gonna hook me up and they never do. Um, nah, man. Nah, nah, I got you. Hey, so let's do this um, rapid fire round. So rapid let's give, fire. Just, just give me what you got. Um, best Jordans ever. Threes. Everybody says the threes. Um, most overhyped. Yeah, most most overhyped sneaker ever. Air Force Ones. <laughs> no shade to Nelly. I, you, I, I, I used to. I got two pair upstairs, super <laughs> clean. We right all do. Now. We all do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they just they gotta go with everything, don't they? Are we still allowed to wear it? You know better than me. Am I still allowed to wear Air Force Ones? Can I do that? Um, I'm, over, I'm over forty, by the way. So, I mean, if they're crispy and they're white, you can never go wrong with like a crispy pair of cocaine whites like that. It's can, never I, can I put the jeans on and I can I put the uh the blazer on with the with the Air Force Ones? Can I do that still? You gotta make sure the jean cut is right. 
That's what my girl be telling me. She said, I got dad gene cuts right now. I don't know what to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So you got you to gotta get a more tapered fit then. Okay. Especially if you want the, the, the runs to look right. Yeah, yeah. Who would win in a 100-yard dash? Me, Quest Love, or G4 Jag? And keep in mind that G4 <laughs> Jag eats four Happy Meals every day. <laughs> toys, toys included. <laughs> hey, sometimes you don't even open a box. So, Jack, I had nothing to do with that statement. <laughs> and let's just be clear. Uh, I, am a, I am a Mike. dead man walking. I am a dead man walking. I'm going to give it to you, Mike, because you got a reason to run now. <laughs> After talking all that shit. I'm going to have to outrun G4. <laughs> 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 okay. Oh, so he, so I'm the winner. I like that answer. I am the winner. Um, so your name is Deuce. You must yeah. have a favorite hip hop duo. Outcast. Favorite pop rock duo. Lennon and McCarthy. Uh, favorite tag team wrestlers. Midnight Rockers. Favorite two seater car. 9-11 Turbo. Favorite two sides from a hood meal from the corner store? Two from side dishes. Store? From the for corner store, get the hood, barbecue, whatever, you know, wings, whatever. What's your side dishes? Mac and cheese and collard greens. Okay, or soul food spot. There we go. Um, better. <laughs> uh, <laughs> who's the better uh, sitcom partners george and wheezy or will smith and carlton banks you got me on that one yeah <laughs> i'm gonna go with george and wheezy at first i thought you were gonna say george and seinfeld <laughs> and i was gonna do that but somebody was like yo that might be problematic a problem question given the politics around <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, you said on your IG page, and this this quote from Andy Warhol: "Art is what you can get away with." Has Warhol been an influence on you and your work? Hell yeah, hell yeah. Uh, his story more so um, than his art specifically. Mm -hmm. You know, Warhol for years took a certain approach to getting into the game. Mm -hmm. He really, really explained his work and was really detailed, and like wanted to be like deep uh and nobody got that and then he made like a painting of a Campbell soup can and he got fucking rich <laughs> you know what I'm saying um so you know yeah Warhol's definitely a, a, a dope inspiration did you go to prom nah I didn't actually I got kicked out of high school Mm -hmm. I didn't. I didn't go to graduation, prom, none of that. What was it? You went uh, through. You went through eleventh grade. Yeah, yeah, and then they yeah. kicked me out. But I had so many credits. It was like I had it occur and shit that I called the lady like a couple weeks after, and I got the nice lady because I knew that like there was a bitch in the office, and she would have been like, "Oh, I gotta see. I gotta talk to somebody." But the lady I talked to, she's like, mm, "Yeah, you do have enough credits. I'm gonna press the button right now, and I'll send it to you, and I'll talk to the people later." And so they sent me my diploma in the mail. You had a song come out seven years ago called Cinderella. I did. Spelled with an S, right? Um, wow. it's, a, it's a dope cut, but does it even have a style? What would you call oh, no. what, what would you call what you did on that song? Oh no, because L Biz produced that record. Word. Shout out to L Biz. See how this whole thing comes full circle? Like it yeah. seemed like I'm doing a lot, but I don't do much, man. Right? Oh, so you do well, a lot. <laughs> But Elvis produced that, and that's what introduced me to Jack, right? Um, and that, that whole album spread, I don't know. I was just, I was in a different space. I was trying to, like, push as much as possible in terms of, like, genre and creation. So that's just a Deuce Ellis original. You, you call it that. A Deuce Ellis original. I like that. Uh, what's real life look like when you're not being artistic? Not real life. <laughs> <laughs> Explain it. Break that down. Break that down for me. Not real life. Your real life looks like not real life when you're not being artistic. Well, I mean, just in the sense that, like, 
Because, you know, I create this stuff and then I run a business that sells this stuff. So that's pretty much like... Your whole life is... Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Uh, but, but it's also lifestyle, you know what I mean? So like, I don't know, I, I, like, I like working out. I like eating real good food, plant-based. Uh, but I, I do my part to make plant-based sexy. You know what I'm saying? I seen some of the meals that you had. I think you posted on IG or something like that. Some stuff yeah, like that. yeah, yeah. We go. We'll, we'll we'll talk later. We'll see if you can. Because the way I think you described it on IG was like this. It was really tasting real good. And that's the hump I got to get that's over. The, that's the that's the part though. Is like when when people be like, "Yo, what do you eat?" I be like, "I eat the best taste of shit you come across, bro." And and my body be feeling great. So you know, Riggs be on that too heavy. On the on the hell. No, shout out Riggs. And then seeing seeing like seeing that and then you know, again when you when you're on your mission and then your mission aligns with other people's missions and you're like, word, that's what's up. This is a thing, this is a movement, you know what I'm saying? And like, yeah, Riggs and them, they on a level out there. I fuck with them. I like that. I mean, I appreciate what y'all doing. I mean, back in like 80, 84, you know, you have got kicked out of Big Mama House because everything in there was fried, you know. Man, I still I still have a tough time. At the, but like then they act, so that's that's where the thing came from. That is where it came from. You don't eat meat. What do you eat? Is what? Well, what do you eat? Go to a family. Like, you don't eat meat. What do you eat, Juice? I'm like everything else. You made mashed potatoes, right? You made some candy yams, didn't you? You made some rice with the beans. Ten years ago. Yeah. Um. Well, let me start with this one. Let me back up. Um. You back up more than ten years ago? <laughs> no, 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 no. Not more than ten years ago. Almost. <laughs> Because I, I trace you back eleven years so far, but um, but you don't have fear, right? Um, no fear of what people think of your decisions. Uh, you're willing to risk it for your right to be creative, um, to be creatively who you are on and off the mic. This is what I see when I do my studies. Where does that come from? That's how you gotta live life. You gotta. Um... When, you know what I mean? Um, yeah, it's you. You know the environments that we grow up in. You know, mm -hmm. um, you learn quickly that like something like fear gets you gets you killed or trampled or not not in a position to to get where you gotta go. Um, and then, you know, it's and you do so many work. different things that see when I was I'm not gonna tell the story. I, I do one thing. <laughs> my one thing is being Deuce Ellis, like that, like the the thing. You know what I mean? Like that's that's the thing that I do. And so all of all of this is just that expression. Let's peel. Let's peel back another layer. Ten years ago, you came out with a with a song called "Too Cool for School." Um, you said it's not about money; it's about sending a message. Ten years later, do you still feel that the message is more important than the money? Yeah. And yeah. that's a dope cut, by the way. Dope, too cool school dope cut. Shout out, uh, shout out to uh, my big bro Idris for producing that. Um, that record it was a dope one. And so um, after yeah. all of these, you 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 put that thought in the atmosphere. The message is more important than the money. Then you still yeah. continue to grind. Apparently, not any bitterness set in to the point where you say, you know what, I'm gonna go for the bag. That never. It's still about the message for you. Yeah, and I mean like. I, I still go for the bag. Don't like that. It's not to be mistaken that like you you don't have you know ambitions for for growth and financial success. Um, but it's more like what what are you willing to give up? You know what I mean? And there, there's it, when you know that there's a path to the bag that preserves your integrity mm. and and keeps clear your legacy. And, and and what your name's gonna mean, you know, years after you're gone, then you you just stick to that path. Like money's gonna come and money's gonna go, and there's so many ways to like make a dollar change pockets that you know. Tabernacle, you're, as they say. Um, yeah, yeah. Listen, there's a lot going on uh, in the video for too cool for it's a. Y'all got to see the video for too cool for school. It's a lot going on in the video. Like you holding a book with Bob Dylan on the cover. How deep do your influences go? Everybody's inspired by somebody who's inspired by somebody who's inspired by somebody else. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. And then Listen, when you, bro, when you, but then you, I'm sorry, but then you got to you got to 
a, a video on your IG, you jumping rope, and it's Fleetwood Mac playing. Yo, that song is dope as fuck. It is. <laughs> Bro, I just got done playing Glycerin on my live show Saturday. That's what I'm saying. Like, like this, I don't have to. And, like, that was the thing. I, when I realized that, like, if I was, if I played what I wanted in school and I worried about people laughing, then people would laugh. But if I played it and I walked around like it was the illest shit and if you wasn't down, you was missing out, then now I was the interview. I was bringing stuff. So that's always what it is. And why wouldn't I? Like, Bob Dylan's dope. Bob Dylan. And then Bob Dylan's so dope that Jimi Hendrix took all along the Watchtower and made it one of the most amazing pieces of music in the history of music. Let me ask you this. Do I have this right yet? Your mother is the voice of Dove Soap advertising campaign? She she did a campaign with them, yeah. Yeah. Um, like a radio campaign. That's wild though. That's yeah. wild. I, I saw I think what did I say on IG and you said you how proud you was of your mom's. Yeah, matter of fact, yesterday was her birthday, so happy birthday, mom. Happy I birthday, my Dukes, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's dope. Um, and you, you you studied music theory? Yeah, recently. And then I realized it was kind of, I don't, I don't want to say it's bullshit. That's not true. Because um, understanding is science, right? Like, yeah. every note is a frequency. You combine these frequencies. The science of it, but it doesn't help you become more creative, right? It, it does. Okay. In a way. Um, you know what? What I say is like, do you, do you need it to get dope shit created? No. Right. Will it help you greatly? Yeah. Will Will you, even knowing the basics of any, you know what I'm saying? Like, why wouldn't you know the science? Yeah. Like that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's another language. It's understanding the language. For me, like, I I just wanted to peel back the hood more. Like, like, do you know? Do you have to be a mechanic to drive a car? Nah. Right. But does it help? Probably. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you've been at it a long time. What is the thing now that is a potential roadblock or impediment to your goals that you know you need to guard against? Nothing. I, we we moving right now. Like I'm I'm in a really, really I'm grateful. I'll say that. I'm really grateful in a great space. Um so there's nothing that happened like maybe seven years ago that you would say, okay, I'm not gonna let that thing happen again because I that already happened. I'm not gonna let that get in the way this time. If there is, give me a reminder because like no, I don't know. I'm not. I don't have. No, I don't have no info. Oh, oh I'm not Edward. I'm oh. not Edward Snowden. I'm just Mike Powers. No, no, no. Like like every release, every attempt, you just learn more. Um, I think for me, especially, what's really, really changed it. And I don't want to say just music theory, right? But it was, it's the approach that I took to music and who that made me as a person. Um, and and that journey, right? That and, and the discipline that I put into like, yo, I really, really want to level up and get good at this. And I think even just sonically and musically, like Midnight Orbis is, is a great display of that. There's nothing, nothing sounds like it. Um, but it feels like home, you know what I mean? It feels like a lot of things that are familiar, but it's also exotic. Um, so, you know, and that that's probably something that like, I, I'd i always known that I wanted to do it or it had been like a vision in my head. So that's another thing I say to people, like if you got something in your skull that you feel like you should be doing for whatever reason, you feel like ah, I should wait until blah, 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 or until like, the, nah, start. Do it. You know what I mean? Get start getting it out of you. That's again, that's where all this came from. It was like, why would I, I used to think like, yo, I'm gonna wait and then, you know, I'll go on tour and come back and buy mag instruments and start learning like, you know what I mean? And then like it worked like that. But it, it also just worked with me taking the initiative. And the more I took initiative and I knew that I could create a sound, I knew that I could write. And for this one in particular, I wanted to just bring in a lot of my favorites and, and hear how they rock over these these sounds that, you know, I was creating and hear like how they flowed and just, you know what I mean? E even, you know, I, I love the game, but I know I was bringing something really different. So to hear them over something different and 
everybody stepped up and gave, I think, some of their best performances um, and their most unique. Like, Matt Wild Out. Uh, shout out CG. I got to make sure I give him some love because the beat that we made together is amazing. Love the genius. Um, Matt props to her. She, she bodied every portion of the song that we made together, and I think that record is really special. Uh, my brother, Jay Skies, mm -hmm. uh Billy Esco. Um, like, and then that's, it, it, you know what I mean? Like, there's just a lot of good energy, a lot of love. And I think you're going to feel that when you hear all of them. So, Absolutely. Yeah, it's, 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 it's and nice. I, I know that, that, that changes things. Yeah. Back in the, back in the day, um, everybody, everybody in the game back in the day would tell you that you need to read this book called The Business of Music by Donald Passman. Uh, one of the pieces of advice he gives in that book is to have a strong team around you. In this day and age, is having that team still a priority? Is it still important? Yeah, yeah, you can't do it alone. Um, and so that's that's why I give a huge, huge, huge shout out to Jordan C. Um, just, you know, I wouldn't have been able to get this project done the way to get this album without his help in that clip. I'll even give a shout out to Fulcid for uh, a and R and and going through a lot of these beats that I had made and kind of giving me an idea of where what was and you know what I mean like narrowing it down to to a solid ten because that was the other thing with it I, I wanted so badly to like finally get like just a ten track album and mm. not you know what I mean like yeah. and and like the last uh, solo joint that I did like it was seventeen. <laughs> Um, so to, to get this down to 10 and to have input and, and feel like it's really solid and beautiful, um, it wasn't just me. It's a lot of people involved. Um, do I, do I feel like, and, and here's the great thing about the interconnectivity of the world, right? Like, do you necessarily need to have your graphic design person be like, you know, up under you and like with you all the time? No, like there's so many resources that you can get a dope graphics person from all across parts of the world that's doing something that, you know what I mean, no one else is doing and that's innovating. Um, same thing with any parts of the game, but you still, it's, it's still great to work with people and, and you need, you know, collaborators, collaborate. Listen, we're social creatures people, right? So this is all based on us working off each other, working off energy. And before we wrap this up real quick, are, will you be on the road soon doing shows? Uh, <laughs> that's an interesting one. Can I be? I, right. so that's, cause I'm trying to figure it out. I'm still stuck in the house. I don't know what's going really going on. If people is, I, I know Benny, I saw him on IG. He went, he did a listening party. I was like, if people getting out and about now again, what's going on? I mean, you know, this, this some, every, every state is, I guess, a little different. Um, I got, you know, I'm just going to do some stuff around New York mm -hmm. um, and some of the low key, like kind of house party spots, but, and, and I'm going to travel. I don't know if I'm necessarily going to do shows. Um, I know I want to do something special in terms of like uh, a live concert at some point. Mm -hmm. um, there's this one space that I've been working with. They do like a direct to vinyl where you do like, you know, the live performance and that performance gets cut straight to vinyl. And that'll be like a special, special thing. Um, that would be dope. Listen, Deuce Ellis, I, what I want to say is, first of all, thank you for stopping by. But let me just say before you, before you leave, because um, sometimes I filibuster at the beginning and I, I give too many of my thoughts. Let me try to give some of my thoughts here at the end. I, I like you because you're different. I like you because you're unafraid. I like you because you bring different things to the table. Um, and I think you are inspiration um, I think I alluded to this in the intro that, you know, you're showing us that we as a people are limitless. And I think it's so important for young people coming up in the hood to see a guy like you spit flames because the man does spit flames um, and be able to play the guitar and be comfortable in your own skin. I have to be the toughest guy on the planet, but still hold your own chest poked out grown man shit. So it's a lot of things going on with this Deuce Ellis guy. If y'all are not hip, 
tap the fuck into this guy. Trust me, you will not be disappointed. Mike Powers said that. Deuce Ellis, thank you for coming on the show, man. It was my pleasure and honor to speak to you today. And I wish you nothing but blessings and uh, future success. My God, appreciate you so much, man. This was a great interview. Real, real good energy, man. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Thank you so much.